In this video, I hope to explain what DNA is, but I'm also going to include information about proteins, genes, alleles, chromosomes, and also explain what the diploid and haploid number is of cells. In order to explain what DNA is, first of all, we have to answer the question, what is a protein? You've probably got some ideas that proteins are involved in making up material or something like that, but in actual fact, there are lots and lots of proteins and they've got very, very different jobs. We've got structural proteins as well as functional proteins. An example of a structural protein is keratin. This is present in rhino horns, in hair, in nails, etc. Some examples of functional proteins are hemoglobin, insulin, amylase, and amylase is an enzyme. Of course, all enzymes are examples of proteins. But also you've got proteins that are involved in determining your hair color, proteins that determine eye color, and all sorts of different functions. So DNA is basically the strip of information that tells your body how to make these different proteins. It's made in this kind of shape with these C's and G's and A's and T's, and the order in which they are present determines which proteins are made. It's convenient to think about DNA as a recipe book. It's the recipe book that tells your body how to cook these different proteins. And this information is present in all of your body's cells. You might be tempted to think that since your eyes have different functions to your skin cells, for example, that they've got a different recipe book. Well, it's true that they do make different proteins and they do have very different jobs, but the information is all there inside of every cell. The DNA that's present in the cells in your eye are, is exactly the same to the DNA that's present in your skin cells. The difference is more or less which recipes get read. So a gene is basically one single recipe. If you imagine this idea of your DNA being a recipe book, then the gene is that one individual piece of instruction, basically the information for making one protein. So let's imagine that here we've got one strand of DNA and highlighted is one small section of it. And that might be the section that codes for making keratin. Remember keratin being a structural protein present in rhino horns, for example. So how exactly does your body make these different proteins with this information? Well, your DNA is contained inside of the nucleus of your cells. And before it's going to make something, before it's going to make a protein, first of all, it's got to make a kind of a copy of itself. Basically, DNA can't leave the nucleus because it's not really safe. It's got to be kept protected. Now, this this new molecule, it's not exactly a copy of it, but it does contain the same information. And this new copy is called RNA. RNA will then leave the nucleus and go to an organelle called a ribosome. Now what ribosomes do is they kind of move along the strip of information, along this code, and every so far they go, they attach a new molecule to a chain. These molecules that they're attaching are called amino acids. And as these amino acids build, they form a chain which might involve thousands and thousands of these things. And the specific combination of them and the specific amino acids that are present determine which protein is made. To summarize it as a simple definition, a gene is a length of DNA that codes for a protein. So what are chromosomes? Well, you might know chromosomes as having this sort of X kind of shape. And they're basically just this, this string of DNA. They're made up of lots and lots of DNA kind of wound up. Now you can see this twisted ladder sort of shape that we've got here. This is a slightly more accurate representation of what DNA really looks like. But it's just another way of representing the same molecule that I presented earlier. So here we've got a chromosome and we've also got the strand of DNA. And chromosomes are made of strands of DNA. To, to give a definition, chromosomes are the thread-like structures of DNA carrying genetic information in the form of genes. Next, let's talk about alleles. To understand what an allele is, you've first got to understand that you've got DNA from your mother and you've got DNA from your father. You've got two sets of this present. So let's look at these two strands here. Amongst it, you've got a gene for eye color from your father, and you've also got a gene for eye color from your mother. But in reality, this is actually slightly misleading. You don't really have two of every gene. You've actually got two versions of it. Each version is referred to as an allele. So simply defined, an allele is nothing more than a version of a gene. It's not any more complicated than that. 
Now, this might beg the question, which allele shows up? If you've got an allele for blue eyes from your mother and you've got an allele for brown eyes from your father, are you going to have blue eyes or are you going to have brown eyes? Well, to find out what the probability is of something being passed on, you've got to do something called a monohybrid cross. I'm not going to be covering how to do that in this video. So, how many chromosomes are present in the body? Well, in the human body, and I stress that this is different for all different species, but in the human body there are 23 chromosomes needed to code for all of the proteins. Now, let's do the maths on this. There are 23 chromosomes from your mother and 23 chromosomes from your father. Now, what this means is there are 46 chromosomes in total and there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. Sometimes we refer to the number of chromosomes and sometimes we refer to the number of pairs. Make sure you're comfortable with the difference between them. So this does present a problem. We can imagine that when reproduction occurs, when fertilization happens, we've got the cells from mother and the cells from father. They combine and they are then going to produce a baby that then has 92 chromosomes. Well, earlier when I said that we've got exactly the same DNA in all of our cells, this is kind of the exception to the rule. Sperm cells and egg cells are different. They each have 23 chromosomes in them. Now what happens when fertilization occurs, these 23 chromosomes join with the 23 chromosomes and this restores the number. We then have a baby that has 46 chromosomes. This is the normal number. There's some important vocabulary that comes with this. First, the diploid number. Diploid cells have got two of each chromosome. Now, in humans, that number is 46. Diploid cells have 46 chromosomes in humans. And this applies to most of your body cells. The word for cells that have half that number is haploid. Haploid cells have one of each chromosome. In humans, haploid cells have 23 chromosomes. And this applies to reproductive cells.